Rob, Pal Rob Palmer has spent his professional career in many roles, including spacecraft designer, computer programmer, and software systems engineer. He's currently a, a columnist for Skeptical Inquirer, and has finally found his true calling as a skeptical activist with the Guerrilla Skeptics team. And he's going to be talking to us all about what Guerrilla Skeptics on Wikipedia is doing. So um, please give a warm welcome to Rob Palmer. Is the mic working? Is that loud yeah. enough? Yeah. Very good. Okay. So I know everyone here has heard of Wikipedia and uses it all the time. It's hard to avoid that, which is a good thing. But how many had heard of the Gorilla Skeptics project before the announcement for this? Well, I know you did, Diane. <laughs> uh, anyone else does want to raise their hand? No one's heard of it. Okay, this is interesting. This is the first time I'm doing a presentation at a humanist group. Uh, this is more widely known in the scientific skepticism circles. Uh, the, the annual meeting in Vegas, which is called uh, SciCon, generally there's some discussion of it there, and there's, there's uh, groups which try to get people to join. But this is good. All right, no one's heard of this. So, uh, from square one, and this is not working. Okay, so I um, already ran through that, but the point is that um, before um, my 20s, I guess, I believed in a lot of woo. Bigfoot, Bermuda Triangle, biorhythms, I was into all that. Eric Von Denigan's books, and it would have been hard to convince me that it wasn't true. And then one day in the library, this is not working. Okay, we're gonna just use this thing. Okay. So I discovered the Skeptical Inquirer, which I've already talked to some people here and they found it too. And that was my, my pathway to rationality. Um, and it was one of those things you start reading and you go, oh, wow, okay, yeah, I knew that wasn't true and that wasn't true. And then, wait a minute, I believe in this. How come they're talking about this like it's not true? <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that basically made me go all the way to understanding uh, what, you know, skepticism was and how to use science to d discover the truth. So, but it wasn't until 2012 that I actually discovered that there actually was a skeptical movement. And I don't know if you guys know about that, but of being humanists and not skeptics specifically. But there is there's conferences, there's probably 500 podcasts, there's YouTube channels, there's books written by, by the people who were involved with that movement. And it took me a long time to find it. Uh, but once I did, I pretty quickly learned about the Gorilla Skeptics, we call it GSOW Project. And in 2016, I joined. and came myself, as they say, if you're a part of this team, you're a skeptical activist. So, and in 2018, I was lucky enough to be hired by the same uh, magazine, which got me convinced of scientific rationality as a staff columnist. So that's cool. I've been working for them just uh, just about three months. And now that's enough about me. So the important thing here is Wikipedia and our team. So Wikipedia, most people in America, uh, maybe English and Spanish, they'll hit, but there are tons of other languages. And on the left side of the panel, for any article, you can see all the languages the current article you're looking at is in, and you can click it and read it if you want. But not duplicates, because each one takes an individual act of translation. And some of our team do, do that. They'll take um, a well-written English article and they'll translate it. Or they'll, if they're fluent in the other language, they'll also write an article in that language from scratch. So I guess the first question here is, why does Wikipedia matter? So the first thing is its popularity. Um, there are all sorts of sites which rate web traffic, and by those sites, uh, Alexa one is one of them that I like to look at, it rates only those three sites as getting more traffic than Wikipedia in the English-speaking world. And that's quite astounding, because you know those are not bastions of wisdom. Google's a search engine, obviously, and the other, the other ones are that your friends and family point to things, and you can put any nonsense you want on YouTube. So. This is, the, this is the chart which shows the rating, and down there you can see Wikipedia is listed fifth in the first column for Alexa, and the one above it is a Chinese search engine. So, as I said, there's only three English sites that get more traffic. So the second thing, besides this popularity regarding web traffic from users, is that journalists use it, and that's very important too. Because journalists who are like assigned a story, maybe they don't know too much about a topic, they'll go look it up on the, on the web and they hit Wikipedia. And so it's very important what it says there, because if it's something that's paranormal or old man or something like that, and if the article on Wikipedia is pro that stance, then they might reflect that in their you know, TV or, or newspaper uh, report, and you, we don't want that. And then the other reason is that Michael Scott says it's important. Wikipedia, 
is the best thing ever. Anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject. So you know you are getting the best possible information. So, if anyone's ever seen The Office, you know, he, this, this character doesn't know what the hell he's talking about anything. So that was meant to be, you know, a slam at Wikipedia, actually. But that was also from the early 2000s, which was when Wikipedia started. And since then, the standards have come way up. It's harder to put nonsense on. There are, there are bots which go around and take nonsense off immediately. Editors have the chance, and I've got to go into details about that, to, to uh, correct errors on the pages that they're actually monitoring and, and fix them. So whether or not that was an intentional slam, it, what, it, what he said, <laughs> it's not true. Because now when independent sources look at Encyclopedia Britannica versus Wikipedia, Wikipedia actually comes out ahead in some ratings. And one of the reasons is if a mistake is made in Britannica, it's there for a long time. Wikipedia can be immediately fixed by people who care about fixing it. So anybody know Captain Disillusion? Nobody, okay. You gotta look at this guy's YouTube channel, he's amazing. He, he, he's, his thing is he's a skeptic, and his, his forte is uh, video editing. So he debunks viral videos that go around that claim to have people flying or cities in the clouds. So normally his, his videos are of that nature. So he did one which was facetious, and it was basically you can't trust anything you read. And he tackled Wikipedia facetiously. So, here, here's so even if we type the word that's under the video into the internet and find a detailed article about this printing technique, we can be sure that it's wrong. Wikipedia, please. It's run by a cabal of critical thinking extremists obsessed with perpetual refinement of factual information through rigorous citation of credible sources. You can't trust that <laughs> And in case you missed it because he spoke too fast, that's what he said. So I actually made a meme and sent that around in Skeptical Psych, so that was wonderful. And the three people that were, were shown in that view were all people who had something to do with scientific skepticism and or the guerrilla skeptics. The, the woman in the center is actually Susan Gerbeck, who's the founder and leader of the organization. And the person to her right was a guy named Tim Farley who actually gave her the idea to start it, and he's one of our members. So, okay, enough about Wikipedia specifically, now I'm gonna talk about guerrilla skeptics. So what are, what are we? So, first off, we're an international team. Um, probably half of our members come from other places besides the United States. And therefore, the, uh, are pro you know, proficient in many languages, which is really helpful. They work in English, and you have to know English to join our team because that's where the training is done in. But you know, all of them have another language, well, except the Australians. Well, sometimes you can't understand them anyway, but um, we're all volunteers, so we, we, don't get, we don't get a dime for this. So it's just people who, who do this because of, of the love of having the right information for people out there. An important point is that we're well trained in this team. And that, that sets us apart from most um, average Wikipedia editors. And our goal is to improve the science of skeptical content on Wikipedia and take all the woo. That's a term skeptics use a little bit derisively about people who believe pseudoscience, ultimate, um, the paranormal, the occult. So instead of saying that phrase, it's woo. And uh, you know, we, we're gonna try to eradicate it, but of course it's impossible. There's just too much out there. But we keep fighting and sometimes referred to the other side as the dark side. Uh, and they definitely have the numbers. As you know, being humanists in a religious world, um, you know, that's a minority, and so are scientific skeptics in, in the world generally about our viewpoint. But we have the skills, because of the guerrilla skeptics team and, and what we've trained, been trained in, we are trained in the rules and guidelines of Wikipedia so that we make sure we're doing everything correctly and therefore your edits don't get reverted. One of the things about Wikipedia is it's a totally collaborative environment. Nobody can go on and just make a change and have it stand if it's done that if it's done in a way that breaks the rules of Wikipedia, and there are many rules. And that's part of the corporate culture. Like when you work in a company, there's a certain way you have to operate. Wikipedia is the same thing. Although it's a volunteer organization and all the editors are volunteers, they've come up by learning what Wikipedia rules and standards are. There are many places that Wikipedia publishes those about what's a notable article. You can't write an article about anything. You can't write an article about any person. And what goes in the article is very important too. So one of the things that's interesting is, you know, what do our critics say about us? And that's just a little small sampling there. Ooh, 
Rupert Sheldrake is, is like big friends with uh, Deepak Chopra, you know him. Uh, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. Rup Rupert Sheldrake is, some, is, is a guy who's a parapsychologist, maybe is that the term, who did these experiments that supposedly proved dogs had ESP. So, 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 so he didn't like that his page was being modified to, to, to put the scientific point of view that what he was saying was nonsense. In fact, this was not our team involved with this, but they made the, he made the assumption and his friends did that it was us. So this became a big media firestorm within the skeptical movement. We actually didn't touch his page. We didn't have to, because most people on, who are, are uh, long-term editors on Wikipedia understand um, how you're supposed to edit. And it's not to add paranormal information. So what is the scope of this team's project? Okay, it's, I've used the word a couple of times. It's the application of scientific skepticism. We write new articles, and also we take existing articles, if they're very small, not well done perhaps, even if they're big and not well done, we totally rewrite them. And that's probably, those two first things are a minority of what we do, and we count those, I'll show you that later. We also make smaller improvements. You know, a particular page has a claim which is not true, we'll remove it, if we're doing that by the correct rules, or we'll add information that's valid to be on the page. And those are the, the type of corrections that get made there are probably a thousand times writing new articles. And unfortunately, we can't track those. But. So, okay, what is scientific skepticism? Um, basically, it's assuming the methods of science are the correct way, not your hunch, uh, you know, not, not especially anecdotal evidence. Five million people might have said they were abducted by aliens and probed, but that doesn't mean it happened. Uh, and also that Skepticism is warranted when those kinds of claims are made, and if, um, if it goes beyond the limits of science, that's different. So, the most important thing is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That's, that's uh, attributed to Carl Sagan, I don't know if he actually said it first, it's probably been said in many ways, but that's, that's the important point. And in Wikipedia, when you make a statement, when you make a statement, you have to back it up with a, a reliable source to, to say that that actually was made, that statement was made. Yes? I have a question, but I don't know if you want to wait for the end of the question. If it's pertinent to exactly what I'm talking about, that's fine. You, so what are, what do you, you say go beyond the limits of science, what is that? Can you drill down on that? Yeah, so if someone makes a claim that the sun stood still in the sky, you know, in, in South America and 500 people witnessed it, okay, that's a testable claim. We could, we could figure out why those people think that. If they just see I, ha I had a personal experience and I saw God, you know, that's nothing that really you can check. It's an anecdote, it's a personal experience. Now I guess my question is more towards like, Wikipedia has everything from science to art to, sure. you know, is there a distinction there? Well, like yeah, that's a good point. So the, the articles on science and uh, peripheral things like history also are, are backed up by reliable sources. If you go to a site which is talking about Nicki Minaj's latest release, or um, a film, and somebody lists the plot. It's it's not as it's not as hard. Like as far as off, it's hard to find a, a full description of the plot. And people generally can put information there without a reliable source. But um, again, it's it's an environment where other editors will read what you wrote and check it that way. So it's essentially a consensus thing. Yeah. But scientific articles have to be well cited. Things about the paranormal. They start out sometimes with just, hey, this is the way it is because so-and-so said so, but then we and other people go in and put scientific critiques on those things. Answer the question? Yes. Okay. okay, and as I mentioned, we're working within the rules of Wikipedia, and they actually put forth um, a publication that talked about this. And one of the things is that the articles on science have to reflect the mainstream scientific consensus. So you might not believe in a specific thing, but if you're working on our team, you know you can either let yourself go from that and not edit those things, or you have to use what the current scientific consensus is to put information on your article. Um, and also fair representation of other opinions <coughs> in science if, it, if it's actual um, something that's being talked about in the scientific community, like whether or not punctuated equilibrium really is, is a large contributor to evolution or not, that's still being talked about. So, okay, you can talk about that. You don't have to just go with what the consensus is um, on the, in that article. You can put what, what the other ideas are. But the big news is that it does not refer to pseudoscience. So, only for legitimate scientific agreement. 
And this helps us a lot in our fight against Wu, the fact that Wikipedia um, states that. So let me show you some examples now of what the team has done. So does anybody know about Goop? Oh, yeah. 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 All right, so it's been in the news just this week. Um, 140 something thousand lawsuit was settled um, by Goop, paid back. The state of California sued them. Um, so this is the way their article looked for, oh yeah, on Wikipedia you can always look at previous versions of articles, and I'll show you how you do that a little later. But that's what this is. This is not the current version. The banner on top tells you, in fact, what the, what the date of the version is and that sort of thing. So what I did is I went and I called up the older versions, and you're going to see some pairings here, the older version and the newer version, um, for a few examples that we worked on on my team. So this was Goop before. Basically just gives the highlights of the company, what the stats are, when it was created, how much money it makes. There's no critique about the nonsense that they sell. So this is the way it looks now. Uh, red boxes are mine, those are on the, on the side. So we put an Alt-Med alt uh, sticker on the right side, and in the table of contents you can see the criticism. So that's important. There's a huge section on the criticisms that have come to the public by either scientists, dietitians, di medical doctors. Um, if they've been published in a reputable source, you can put it in the article, and we did. The, the, the criticism um, section is actually huge. So the other important thing to point out here is the part above the, the table of contents is called the lead. Wikipedia has a policy where the article is supposed to be summarized in the lead. So you can have 15, if you print it out, 15 pages of stuff below the table of contents. Those two, three, four paragraphs above should be a summary of it. Well, initially, as you saw, there was, it was just the company's description. So now you come down here, and fully half of the lead is the fact that, hey, in this article, there's a lot of critique, you should read this. And this is important, because people open a Wikipedia article, and a lot of times they just read the lead. I'm sure everybody's done that. I don't want to read 10 pages. OK, that's a summary. I got it. If that wasn't there, there'd be nothing to indicate that you should go down to criticism, because it's important stuff here. And so one of the things that we can look at also is, OK, is this, is this pertinent? Does anyone look at this page? And this shows that. Uh, yes, it, it, it quite, quite is, 175,000 page views. That's quite amazing. If you, if you look at the stats there, it's over time. The, um, can you see that? It's very faint. You can see it's just peak here, oh, a peak here. The projector's not rendering that very well. Well, I won't spend time on those parts of the charts. It looks really dark on the screen, that's all. Okay, so but basically, there are days when it gets 2,500 people looking at the Google. Wikipedia page in one day, it's spread over a week. And that happened just recently because of the, the recent newspaper articles. And generally, it's uh, maybe even 500. On a regular average day, 500 people, hey, what's this goop? Should I order from them? They'll look at the page. So now it's really nice that they go and they see that, as opposed to, oh, it's just a nice company that's got a you know, good market share. Right. So um, this is another example. What the health? Anyone watch this documentary? No. Hear of it? Okay, it was big news because it was released on Netflix. You know, millions and millions of people saw this. It's hard to even say it's a documentary. It's a polemic. Um, it's a vegan polemic. Now, there's nothing wrong with veganism, but this documentary had no facts right. It was basically trying to convince people by vegan activists that if you eat meat, you're going to die. The only way to live a healthy life is not to have meat at all. So the in initial description didn't say too much about that at all. It was mostly about the movie. And then what we did is we put the reception, which was a lot of scientists writing that this is nonsense. And again, in the lead, half the lead now says, oh, yeah, not so much. This is, this is cherry picking and not really using the actual data. And you're not going to be able to see the lines there. But this goes up to almost 10,000 views for a three-month period every single day. People were looking at this when it was released on Netflix. And then even now, it's on Netflix, not being highlighted anymore, but 1,000 people a day hit that Wikipedia page. So, Tyler Henry. Someone mentioned uh, in the introduction not wanting to rely on what, what uh, dead people say. All right, so this is not necessarily people who wrote holy books, but this is people who claim to be able to speak to dead people now. Tyler Henry? Anybody know Tyler? No. No, okay, oh, that's good, probably. Hollywood Medium. He's got a show on the E! Entertainment Network for three years. He sits down with celebrities, so he's always in the news. Uh, he does the Kardashians, he does news reporters, and therefore, you know, he, those people are famous, so he's famous. He's a kid's in his young 20s, is a multi-millionaire already. His, this is his original article, basically just said, hey, he found out when he was young he could talk to dead people and go watch a show. Um, now, not so much. So now it says up in the upper right, 
hey, this is paranormal, and half of the lead again, reflecting the huge amount of crit criticism that's in the article, says, uh, yeah, this is nonsense. He's tricking everybody, intentionally or not. What he's doing is a, is a, is a form of basically sleight of hand, uh, what carnival magicians can do. People who don't claim that they're actually talking to the dead people. And Tyler's page gets 2,500 on an average day something up to 14,000 in one single day whenever his show is talked about in the news, like a new season is started. So anyone heard of the Blue Whale game? No. Okay, so that's, um, that's turns out to be an urban legend, but there was a Wikipedia article claiming that millions of people across the planet, teenagers and younger, were killing themselves because of a social media game that was daring them to do more and more um, risky things and then finally to kill themselves. And the article initially was, was backing that up with anecdotal information from all over the world. It started in Russia, I think, a lot of Russian newspapers, and just taking credulously the claims that this was happening. So our team looked into it and basically rewrote the entire page and basically proving it's an urgent urban myth. All of the articles that talked about these suicides were just making stuff up, like a young girl killed herself and she had pictures of a real blue whale on her mirror. Therefore, blue whale gang killed her. It was stuff like that. It was actually not. So this was good because now parents look this up and they don't have to be quite so worried. At least not that, not that this is going to cause the, the child to kill themselves. And this is actually one of our most popular Wikipedia pages. So the number there is one quarter of a million people a day, every single day for a long period of time. And even on average, it's, it's 10, 20,000 people. And this is just the English version. There's also uh, international versions of this page of the language. So science articles. So not all of our work is done to fight woo uh, some, and, and so does science. Sometimes we actually write articles about scientists um, and also our skeptical spokespeople who, who back up the scientists. And uh, as I mentioned here, um, involuntarily sometimes. So we'll get to that. So astronomer Alan Hale. Oh, no, wrong picture. So astronomer Alan Hale, the, the first name in the Hale Pop Comet. Um, I wrote the article on him, and that was really good. He had like three paragraphs, and now it's like a, if you printed it, it would be three or four pages long with all the details of his life leading up to the discovery and afterwards. Um, there's a local astronaut. Uh, I, I actually worked with this guy, astronaut Bob Senker. He used to work at RCA and got to fly in the space shuttle. So we wrote an article for him. And then the involuntary science participant. Uh, there was a cat launch into space, which most people have never even heard of, because uh, the United States launched uh, chimpanzees and Russia the dogs, but uh, France, no one cared about one cats. So uh, the, old, the only surviving uh, cat, Felicit. So we also do work on humanist topics. And Camp Quest, you guys mm -hmm. must know about that. Yes. Okay, so we wrote the article in the UK version. There was, a, there was an English one, American one, I mean. Nathan Phelps, anybody know the name, Nathan Phelps? Craig Phelps, Westboro Baptist yes. Church. Yes. Okay, so Fred Phelps recently died, and then um, he's got an article, obviously. But his son, Nathan Phelps, also had an article, but it was nothing much on it. So as soon as uh, Fred died, we realized that since Nathan talks against the Westboro Baptist Church, and the news media would like to probably find people to speak to, we updated his page so that it was pretty prominent and journalists could find out who this guy was, and then give him a call and have him interviewed. Lucian Greaves, the head of the Satanic uh, Temple, and uh, our friend Seth. So, Seth was uh, questionably not notori not notable um, by Wikipedia standards. Unfortunately, it was very hard to get his page to stick, but we finally did. Part of the reason his books are self-published, hasn't been talked a lot about in the national press, and that's one of the things you have to be to be Wikipedia notable. Talked about international and national press. But he now has a pretty good page. So, all right, how, how do we decide what articles uh, to work on? There's so many different topics. Well, one way is Wikipedia itself. Wikipedia likes lists, and there are bots that go around to pages that are categorized. Every page in Wikipedia is categorized in one of, or multiple ways, and so you can put a tag on, this is paranormal, or, or this is medicine, or this is science, or some sort, or this is all, all science. So then the bots go along and they say, oh, how many page hits are these pages and those categories getting, and it makes the list. So that's the paranormal list. You can see interesting things on there that you might expect, and maybe some things you don't expect. Yes? Do you want to tell us who Art Bell is, who tops that list? And yes, Art it? Bell. He's, he's got a, <laughs> uh, I forget the name, is it? Anybody? Coast to Coast AM. That's it, thank you. Coast to Coast AM radio show. He talks, 
to all sorts of paranormal ah. people. Yeah. Uh, that did not surprise me to see him. The one, there was one that was up there that surprised me. Let's see. I'm not seeing it right now, but okay. So those kind of make sense. Then, there, then there's another list, Alt-Med. So some of those things seem, seem in, anybody know why Jenny McCarthy's on the list? Yeah. Uh, yes, right, she's an anti-vaxxer. Probably killed more people, it's sad to say, by following her uh, for, for advice on vaccinations. I agree with it. Okay, <laughs> so skepticism, that's another set of lists. There's items here, I don't know why Sean Hannity is on the top of the list, but most of the other are, and our bells again there. So a lot of things that are pseudoscience are flagged in two different ways. They're flagged um, for skepticism and paranormal. So those are groups of people that uh, are on Wikipedia as editors and they care about those topics. So usually if someone is interested in the paranormal and they flag something on the page, we'll notice that, oh, okay, if you're gonna put paranormal stuff on it, we're gonna flag it for skepticism. And there you go for religion. Tom Cruise, everyone knows why he's there, right? I don't know some of them, but. Albert Einstein? Why is Albert Einstein there? People argue over whether he was an atheist or not. Thank you, right. correct. Why yes. What's that? Why is Clapton up there? I don't know, so you'll have to look it up. <laughs> Look at this article and see if it makes any sense if they mentioned something about his religion. I don't know. So, as you can see from that list, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of topics on Wikipedia. And this next one is just to show that pretty much everything is on Wikipedia. This one's actually a little low. I'll bet you'll have to turn the volume up a little bit. So, this is a TV show on NBC, Timeless, Time Travel. Have you seen it? Okay. So, uh, this is one pilot of their time machine, and there's a backup person who's only been practicing, and she's never actually flown it yet. So this comes into play when the pilot is actually severely injured and doesn't know if you can pilot the machine to get them back to where they have to go. Are you okay, Josh? So, uh, I'm doing this very well. Yeah, I don't care. What about you? Can you help Rufus? He's co-pilot? What? I've logged over 60 hours this year. But I've died a lot. Forget about it. The last thing's only meant to care of three people. Okay, well, what happens with four? Oh, well, let me just check Wikipedia for sending an additional organism to a wormhole. <laughs> so I actually want to write that article, but I haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> Why did they cancel that show? Is it canceled? Oh, no, I didn't know that. That was my first to come back. No, not canceled? Tony? We got to cancel it or not canceled? Still on? Wikipedia. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, so uh, another, another way that we get besides the lists that I showed you from, from there are um, just kind of random chance. I, I was actually driving home from work one day and I was listening to a skeptical podcast and this fellow, Bob Nygaard, was being interviewed on a show called Skepticality. I had never heard of him before. So this says psychic detective, but he's not a psychic detective. He's a tech detective. He's a private eye who busts psychics, gets their clients their money back and attempts to put them in jail. So in fact, if anyone saw Pink Collar Crimes, there was an episode about a month ago where um, they highlighted one of the psychics that Bob went after for over 10 years and put away repeatedly, and Bob actually got to play himself there. So that was interesting. So this is the article we wrote from scratch. There was nothing for his, his presence on the web was only his own Twitter account. Now if people get scammed and they hear something about him, they could read all of this, and it gives all the examples of the famous cases he's busted, and hopefully give him some more work. This is actually what you see if you Google him. Uh, on the upper left, is right there, first hit Wikipedia and also on the right side, which is cool. And since I write for Skeptical Empire, I actually had the privilege of interviewing the man, and I put a two-part interview out. And I got to ask him some questions with the goal, essentially, of getting him to answer things which were not in the Wikipedia article, because it weren't published anywhere else yet, and said other people can take that from this publication and put it on his Wikipedia page. And this is a little bit of a self-promotion here. It's, it's one of the few times that we got to do something where the, where the, the, the target of our writing actually was uh, you know, so, so prominently displaying that he was, he was thankful for us to do the work that we did. So. Unfortunately, Bob is the only one in the world doing this. So I told him he's got to train people because when he retires and he's close to that age, no one's going to be doing it. So I mentioned that we make all sorts of other improvements to Wikipedia besides writing articles like Bob's. Um, and this is just a quick list. I mentioned that we do the lead. 
we put wiki links on. Those are those little blue links you click which bring you to another Wikipedia article. And sometimes, like if you get an article on psychics and you read that, uh, there's not too much about there to go somewhere else, but if you put the proper link, okay, psychics get, do their thing and trick people by doing cold and hot reading. You put a wiki link on the cold reading to the cold reading article on Wikipedia, and then somebody can read, oh, that's how they're doing this. So we'll do that. We also put banners, I showed you some of those. Those are the ones that said it was old men or paranormal, and that gets it classified properly, and also people can you know, understand what they're looking at. If there's a specific line, not the whole article, but a specific line of text, that isn't really cited very well, we can do one of two things. We could remove it, or if we think it's probably correct, but they just didn't put the source there, you put that little citation needed there, and uh, then that triggers the system to automatically put it on a list to tell people to go try to fill that in. Uh, if we come across something which is just wrong, flagrant, flagrant lying, we take it off. And as I've mentioned before, we add scientific and skeptical content and all the appropriate references. Sometimes it's criticism on a page, but there's no reference there, so we'll go find the reference and put it on. So, one interesting example is Yuri Geller. Does anybody know about Yuri Geller? Okay, does anyone know about his appearance on The Tonight Show? Okay, so that was not on either Yuri Geller's page, Johnny Carson's or The Tonight Show. So, I was reading an article about it, and I said, oh, I should put it on the pages. So I put it on all three of their pages. So basically, Yuri Geller, the spoon bender, was invited to be on The Carson Show to prove he could do his stuff. And Carson being an amateur magician, knew James Randi, who's the grandfather of modern skepticism, and a big magician. He's from right here. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. And, and he helped Johnny set up a test so that when Yuri Geller came out as a guest, it was on the table in front of him, and Yuri Geller was stymied. Oh, my powers are weak, I can't do this today. And he totally bombed. So now that story is on uh, all of those three Wikipedia articles. And, and as a, the, the, the largest, possible, you know, worst thing we could do is actually delete an article wholesale because it's just not salvageable, or it's an article that should not be there in the first place. And what you do is we don't delete it ourselves. What you do is you put a flag on it, and that sets off a whole cascade of reaction in Wikipedia, and the editors come and read it and vote on it. So, um, how do people who are looking find the articles that we write? If we write these articles and no one reads them, then, you know, what's the point? But one of, the, one of the things is Wikipedia's got its own search engine, so people are using it, you can type in anything you want. That's, it's not as nice as Google, because it has to pretty much a, a direct match to the text of the title or something in the article. Um, I mentioned Wikilinks already. But the biggest thing is Google itself. So Google is amazing, and probably other search engines, that's the one I tend to use, so I have the examples of that from here. So here we go, Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop. Uh, the left side is, is what you normally would get if we have, didn't have the Wikipedia article. It's, it's the company website, it's all the YouTube videos about how great it is. But now on the right side, prominently displayed is the Wikipedia article, which has all the criticism. And we hope people click on it there. And as you can see from the numbers, as we mentioned, of the, the hits on the Wikipedia article, we know that they do. So I mentioned the, the uh, psychic medium, Tyler Henry, again, the, the first thing is his show, The Hollywood Medium. It's, it's the famous people like Brooke Park, who he sat with and you know, got reported on by CNN or, other, or elsewhere. But on the right side is a Wikipedia article which says this stuff is nonsense. And as I mentioned, the Blue Whale game, the first hit, unfortunately, is suicide prevention, lifeline. But at least now we have the Wikipedia article saying, no, it's just an urban legend. Comes up, second hit. And I didn't talk about this one, but anybody know the, the sonic attacks in Cuba? news? Okay, so a lot of scientists were being ignored that were looking at this who have expertise in these sorts of things and they were saying it's actually probably just uh, a psychogenic illness. It used to be called mass hysteria. And so there was a lot of information out there but it wasn't on the Wikipedia article. Well now it is and that's the third hit. So now it's not quite so clear that actually we're being attacked there or in China. As I mentioned uh, brief before, the journalists use Wikipedia and I have an example of that. This is hard to come up with because, hey, you know, how, how much can we watch television or read newspapers and magazines? But we actually have an editor who's a boxer. And so he reads USA Today, the sports page. So this popped up online. Ronda Rousey, WWW fighter, uh, also Olympic uh, athlete, I think champion. She sat down with the aforementioned Tyler Henry and, you know, talked all about uh, her father's suicide and Tyler, Tyler got her in touch with him and it was sad. I actually watched the video. But you know, she fell for it. So this journalist could have said, oh, Tyler Henry's success, just like a lot of the other articles. However, this is a, into his article, he put some inf interesting information in here. So he called him a grief vampire, and he mentioned that he won the truly terrible television award from the IIG, 
That's the uh, investigation department from the organization that owns Skeptical Inquirer, by the way. So we go, well, how do those journalists find that stuff out? So then we go to Wikipedia article text. And perhaps not surprisingly, that's what's on his Wikipedia article as added by the Bureau of Skeptics, that he won the Truly Tele Tele the Television Award and the details of that. And then on the next page, a little scrolling down the Tyler Henry article, we prominently mention he's a great vampire three times. So, so the journalists could have coincidentally come up with that, but we don't think so. So, so instead of getting an article about how great Tyler Henry is and he, you know, he, he talked to the dead relatives, this slammed Ronda Rousey for sitting with Tyler Henry and falling for it, which was good. Okay, so we, we talked about like changes to the pages and what happens, and so now I'm gonna show you the view history page. This is very important when you're editing Wikipedia. Every edit you make is recorded. Not everything is transparent. So this is the way an article normally appears when you do a search, it says article. But that tab over there where it says view history is very important to, to anyone who really cares about editing it because you have to figure out what was done previously. So by the way, this is uh, an article I worked on, Modern Flat Earth Society, and I don't know if you guys follow this, but the beliefs in this is growing, unfortunately. This article is a little out of date because it talked about basically a newsletter organization, but I added the um, table of contents, item number five there, right? Resurgence in the era of social media. So that's important because you have celebrities tweeting that they believe the earth is flat. You have YouTube, very slickly made YouTube videos. And there are, locally, and a few feet. And then there are, then there are, um, <clears throat> there are now uh, actually national, international conferences on this. There's enough people who are supporting and believing this to, to, to do that. Don't go fly an <laughs> Doesn't matter, believe me. One of the one of the most viral videos of the of the of the pro flat earth crowd is a guy who took a, a level on the plane, filmed himself with a level. See, it's not changing as we're flying. <laughs> Millions of heads like can you <laughs> but just look up flat earth level, you'll find it. <laughs> so so this is what you see if you look in the revision history. Uh, it, it starts out with all right, how many there are, how many pages, and gives you the choice of looking at groups of them. This is a, a little bit of a detail scrolling down the list. So this is saying, okay, how many bytes were changed on what date by what editor? There's a note about why it was changed. The one off on the bottom talks about adding uh, a vandalism flag, meaning that the page is being vandalized or, or not edited properly, and that's a flag to Wikipedia to do something about it. And then there's another page that's very important. It's the talk page. Again, most people never even know this is there. It's right next to article, but nobody clicks on it, unless you're an editor and you want to know what's been going on on the page. So when, again, going back to the Modern Flat Earth Society, as an example here. So, as I mentioned, I added that, that section to the actual article. And now, this is what the Wikipedia article text says. Basically, it says, hey, you know, this is nonsense and it, it's becoming believed more and more because of media and YouTube and, and this is not just my opinion, these are the opinions of other well-known science and skeptics who've written about this and they're cited. So then, now we're gonna go to the talk page because when I looked at the history page, somebody had taken all that information off. You know, this is what the talk page looks like. So someone added this section to talk. It says, hey, hey other editors, I wanna talk about this new section. And what they basically wrote was, um, you're not being fair to the flat earthers. And this is an encyclopedia, and it needs to be fair and balanced. And uh, how could you put this up there to insult them all? So not only me, who wrote, who wrote that section, but other editors, who not to do with GSOW, just are, are very good Wikipedia editors, said, you've got to be kidding me. Um, you know, no, we don't have to give it fair and equal balance. And then that last part, actually, I put on there, which was the Wikipedia stance on the paranormal, which is just that's in their face. Sorry, Wikipedia says we don't have to give a fair and balanced shake to flat earthers. And then that editor went away. So that section, as far as I know, yesterday is still there on Wikipedia. So one might say, okay, what, how did I know that the person took it off? Or they might take it off today. So one important thing is monitoring the articles that you're interested in. And anyone with an account to do this, you can set it as long as you have, a, you, anyone can edit Wikipedia, you don't need an account. You can do it as an anonymous editor. But if you make an account, then you have this other ability here. You can monitor any article you're interested in to see if it changes, right? And this is what you get. You get a watch list. You decide what articles you want Wikipedia to tell you about when they're changed. 
And up at the top, you can even set it to email you anytime that happens, which is <coughs> my default, actually. And that's really helpful. So back to the specifics of, of the team. All right, how, how big are we? Um, so to give you something to compare it to, first off, that's the number of registered contributors, just in the English Wikipedia. So that means people who have accounts, right? But of those, somebody makes an account, they don't necessarily do anything with it. So that many do it frequently, and Wikipedia defines that as at least once a month, which to the people on my team, that's like nothing. We'll do it like five times a day or 10 times a day. So, but still, 130,000 people are frequent contributors to English Wikipedia. Um, there are also, as I mentioned, you can edit Wikipedia without having an account. We have no idea how many that is. It might be up in the millions. Don't know. Um, and we have about 100 people. So all the good we're doing is with you know, somewhere between 100, 120 people now. How are you organized corporate wise? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a corporation, it's just a group of like minded individuals. Susan Garvick, as I mentioned before, created the group, and then it, it, it's grown. Who does and Tyler sue? Sorry? Who does Henry Tyler Sue. Probably Susan Garber. <laughs> you listening to that, Susan? I'm recording. No, I'm recording. So she's going to see this. Okay. Better watch out, Susan. But what she always says is, let him come and get me. Because he'd have to prove he can talk to dead people. So, um, my bottom line here is while we're you know very small contributor to Wikipedia, we, we think we do make a big difference. And then I'm going to talk about some numbers here. So, as I mentioned, Susan Gerbic founded it. We're only eight years old. Uh, we've grown to 100 editors, and as I mentioned, they're not all Americans. And in that time, we've written 670 articles. And as our numbers have grown, uh, that would be sort of a, not linear curve, it's an exponential curve. We've written you know, probably over half of those in the last two years. And I don't know if you can see the graph again. No, but all right, the number is what's important there. That's, that is our total page view of just the articles that we've written from scratch or made major changes to. Not all the little tiny tweaks we do, which might be a thousand times there. So we've just passed 30 million. And it, that, that, that number quite boggles my mind. Um, and without doing anything else, if we just left it at that and maintained the pages, that would keep growing at a rate of 1.3 million a month. And that rate keeps going up as we add articles. So personally, why do I do this? So I feel I'm making a con contribution to the rationality of the world, hopefully a small one at least. Gives me a sense of accomplishment instead of banging my head against the, the wall figuratively by trying to argue with friends one-on-one -on -one or on social media that their woo beliefs are nonsense, because they're mostly people, if they're arguing with you, they believe it and they can't, you can't change their mind. Not likely anyway. But people look at Wikipedia who are not clear on something. A friend recommended a Reiki master, hey, and she's like, all right, Reiki, let me look it up. And if they hit the Wikipedia article, which is very pro-Reiki, they might go. If they, if they read the way it currently is, which says it's pseudoscientific nonsense, then they might think twice about it. That's, that's our point. And personally, I've written 17 articles. I, I recently crossed a million page views, uh, and that's also quite a staggering, 60,000 a month. Yankee Stadium full of people every month reading the, just the major 17 articles I've written. So, I mean, some bestsellers would be lucky to get that uh, in a one-time book, and, this, and that's gonna go on and on. So that's quite interesting. So one question is, can't you just do this on yourself, uh, on your own? You know, I, I'm just going to Wikipedia and I'll start making edits. Well, the details of the editing are daunting. I actually tried this 10 years ago. I, I first got my account back in 2005, I think, and um, I tried to edit something that wasn't even scientific, and it was just, I probably put three hours into it, the next day it was all gone. I, I was so frustrated, I never touched it again. Because I just didn't understand how you fight back, did I do the wrong thing, is this person wrong, who to complain to? And that happens to more people than you think. So, you know, by joining our team, we're, we train you in the right ways, and then there's a backup system, so you can, you know, understand what to do right, what to do wrong. We teach the rules and the guidelines of Wikipedia, and there are many. Um, if you get into conflict with other editors, we can tell you, well, are they right or are you right? And, and how to push back if you're the one who's right. And basically, it's just extremely frustrating to go it alone. So here's just one topic, Wikipedia notability. I just searched in the upper right Wikipedia notability and there's, what is that, 10 pages, eight pages. <coughs> Each separate article is very long articles all about what is notability in all those this categories. And just picking the first one, this is the table of contents. It's, it's, it's rather daunting to understand what the rules are 
and it's very easy for someone who hasn't been trained to just waste their time, write an article on somebody, and the next day it's gone. Um, the worst thing is if you make an account and you make little changes and you're kind of happy with it and you're, you're getting some experience but you keep doing the wrong thing, then you can get blocked, either temporarily, you can be blocked from a talk page, and the, the worst thing here is your, your whole account can be blocked indefinitely if you keep screwing up. So, so there are some ramifications of not knowing what you're doing. So we provide the knowledge, the support, the training, and maybe most importantly also a mentoring of people who know how to do this stuff to help. So hopefully somebody in this team here, or somebody knows somebody, and can show this video later, who might like to join the team. Um, this is where you can find us online. That's our email address. I have cards in the back on the table, by the way, with the GSOW logo on it, with, with all this information. There's a promo on the Skeptic Zone, which is a, um, a skeptic podcast from Australia, and I actually recorded it, so that's cool. If you just go into YouTube and you search Gorilla Skeptics promo, you'll hear a little bit like, I don't know, it's maybe 40 seconds ahead on, on the subject. And this, our, our motto at the end of that promo is actually kind of cool. We educate the world even while we sleep. Our numbers go up even when we're not at the keyboard, so that's kind of cool. And lastly, I created a Facebook page. If you've got a smartphone, you can snap it right from there, but it's also on my personal card in the back, which on that page, I highlight the work of the Gorilla Skeptics and also the articles that I write for Skeptical Empire magazine. Okay, and that's it. So, any other any questions? We only have one before. Oh yeah, hold on. Uh, first of all, thank you. Well, that was good. Thank you. Yeah, there's definitely time for discussion, and uh, just want to remind everybody of the rules that it's 11:30 now. We'll go to about 12, 12:10 normally. Um, please only use the microphone to ask a question or speak. It just helps things move along and, and not everyone can hear everyone. And if you have a question, raise your hand and I'll try to keep track of who's who in the order they are. Don't get frustrated if I'm not getting to you. And we try to do one each and so we'll, we'll get to everyone. This is the first hand I saw. Uh, thanks for your great work. Can you quantify whether the forces of woo or the forces of skepticism are um, prevailing at this time? On Wikipedia or on the world? Yes. <laughs> I think Wikipedia, uh, under the current management system, uh, is doing just fine. The, 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 the tenets of the encyclopedia are, as I stated, uh, very pro-science and anti-pseudoscience. The people who are on that side of the issue, the, 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 the pseudoscience people and old <coughs> people, hate us. They hate it. You know, they basically think we've taken it over, which 120 people, you know, millions is obviously not true because every time something happens to something, they know about us. So everything, every time something happens to one of their things that they don't like, we get blamed. But, but do, woo, do well, woo articles pop up faster than, than they can be corrected? Well, the articles are corrected by other editors besides us also. So I'll just say, it's, it's not just 100 people working this because it's Wikipedia's paradigm. To, to have that frame of mind. The editors have been working for a very long time understand that. And they generally won't let a blatantly bad article like that be, uh, be published. So um, this is a little anecdotal story. My niece told me that for a history project, she actually wrote a Wikipedia article and then put false references on it because she didn't find anything that she actually could refer to and she passed the class with that. Um, this was like 10 years ago when Wikipedia started. You couldn't get away with that anymore. So now when you make a new article, the new article publishing itself sets up a flag that trained editors come and look at the article and see if it meets all the Wikipedia rules and standards. And very often they just immediately get deleted. Uh, we asked for a clarification on Woo. <laughs> um, what? We, could you give us a clarification on uh, Woo? As you said earlier, it, just what it is. Yeah, it's, it's a short right. term. Some people don't, don't like it even in our movement because it's derisive. You know, it's basically taking a slam at people who believe nonsense. Does it stand for anything? Sorry? Does it stand an acronym? No, no, it's not an acronym. No. no. Oh. It, and actually, the origins are somewhat lost. I looked this up last week because we were having a discussion on it on a real skeptics team. Look up Wikipedia. It's like people uh, saying, oh, can you believe this? Woo! Yeah, some people actually said it's like it's like aliens saying, woo, 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 spacecraft noise, or people saying they're crazy, woo, 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 but, uh, you know. It's hard to know for sure. It's one of those things that's probably been lost in history, although it's probably only maybe 15 years old. Yeah. Yeah. It comes from California surfer. Sorry, what? It comes from All right. California surfer. California surfer. Okay. Let's bring it back to uh, 
the fucking yeah, I, have, I have a question. Um, now you're dealing with information. Uh, do, you, do you have much dissension in your group? And if you do, how do you handle dissension? Uh, for example, you had mentioned something about like what the health. Uh, say you had a vegan in your group. Oh, we do. He was one of the main people who edited you, the article. How do you handle dissension? Though really, it generally isn't. He, he's one of them. Yeah, so this is this is a European editor, and he is an activist vegan. He's a kind of vegan who, like, if you say, just hey, what you do this weekend? I had a great, you know, we had a great barbecue, and he goes, oh, I hope your people didn't have meat, you know, <laughs> right? How do you know? How do you know if someone's a vegan? They'll tell you. So that that's the way. Not. But but he was the first to understand that this is nonsense, and he doesn't want a bad argument to be making his point. So he's the one who actually went in and made uh, made changes. I think that's yeah. right. I think Leon did it. But if he didn't, he gave us information to put there. How does uh, how do you handle religious claims in terms of Jesus's resurrection, or do you just leave that in Wikipedia and that's the claims of these people? You don't put. My question is: Do you put skeptical analysis of religious? Claims so that are thousands of years old. So it's not a thrust of, of our group. We tend to do the science and fight back on anti-science. So there are editors who do that privately, uh, perhaps, and maybe I don't hear about it so much. So the only page I specifically worked on, personally, regarded that was was the miracle of the sun. So yeah. So as I that's why I mentioned it before because yeah, that that's something that people have written about. And okay, how can people? huge group of people agree on the same thing happened even if it didn't happen, and I did put information on that page. Um, we also have an editor who's very into um, uh, the rights of people who left Islam, and he writes many articles on that subject. Again, we don't count that as a real skeptic's page views, but he's, that's one of the really good things. You can you know, join our team and learn how to do this stuff and help us out, but on your own, you can do anything you want, you know, but as long as you're with, operating within the Rules. And some people do that. They'll, they'll have a specific area of interest that's not exactly scientific skepticism. They join, they help us out, they do those things, but they also do their own things. Over here. Yeah, my, my uh, initial question was just uh, asked by the friend of, in the last row over there. But uh, I also wonder if you require any pre-qualifications, any kind of background of the contributor. That's a good question. And uh, no, the only thing you really have to have is a Facebook account and a computer and, and the willingness to learn and to want to do it. And oh, you have to speak English because the training is in English. Susan Garvey personally trains everyone. Her Spanish is iffy and she doesn't speak anything else, so it's got to be in English. Good morning. Um, my question was answered also, but I thought of another one. Uh, how many hours a week or do you put into this? Uh, I don't know. Oh, are you keeping track of that? <laughs> so, uh, he sleeps us two hours a day. <laughs> so it's hard to tell. It, it depends. It, it runs in spurts. And different editors have, you know, some people graduate and then uh, don't touch it for months and months, and other people go full bore into it. There's no requirement once you graduate. Susan wants people to finish the training in a couple of months, maybe three months. Um, there have, in the past, people were hanging on for a year, kept saying they couldn't do it, they couldn't do it, and she's finally wanting to make a more strict criteria for graduating, you're finishing it, or you're off the team. But once you graduate and you do the work, there's no rule at all. You can put in as little or as much as you want. And Susan, by the way, talks about the, the training as maybe like a freshman undergraduate level course, you know, in length of time commitment. I, I think that's a slight exaggeration, but um, I did it, I did it like in three weeks about myself. Okay, well, first, thank you. <coughs> for the work you do. It's uh, part of creating a, a civil society. Uh, it serves a great purpose. And um, uh, can you see those lists, the religion list, the paranormal list? Can anybody see them? Or yes. Is that just for yes, anything on Wikipedia is visible to anybody. It's possibly a slight exception. Because Wikipedia is open to everybody. If people put slanderous information about people that are living, living people, on the biography, and then it gets deleted. In some cases, administrators of Wikipedia, which is a tiny subset who actually get paid by Wikipedia, I don't know how many there are, maybe 100 in the world, maybe less than that, uh, compared to the tens of millions who are editors. 
but those people will like take it off and basically bury it in private records that only administrators can see. Because even though it's off the main page, if you left it in history, someone else could read about the slanderous stuff. But with that exception, I believe anything can be seen by anybody if you know how to look at the, the history pages. And, and the list, by the way, that's just totally open. It's just a Wikipedia article. If you search list of paranormal or most popular paranormal pages in Google, you probably hit that page. OK, so for my real question, um, you said alternative matter. Some people have life-threatening illnesses with no solution. Um, and so they don't have any choice other than searching um, alternative solutions because science just doesn't offer any, any um, remedy. And it's, uh, uh, it's uh, within a year or two, you're going to expire. So you have to do certain things. Uh, you strike all of that out, all of that gray information out, right? I mean, there's no medium ground here where these people can... No, the information is there. It would just be countered by the scientific consensus on the subject. So one example is the Brzezinski Clinic. I think it's in Texas. Anybody know about that? Cancer what treatment. He's been... What's the name? Brzezinski. He's been Polish-American. Uh, um, and I only know that because they wanted to, to make sure that they copied the good version of the English page, which we created into Polish. Um, but basically, he's got a cancer clinic that's been running for decades and decades, and he charges people a fortune, and they go bankrupt and lose their houses, and they're going to die anyway, because what he's not doing is nonsense. So his page reports that what he does, and the scientific consensus has evaluated that as nonsense. Obviously, somebody could still go and spend the money if they want to, but at least the information is out there. As, yeah. well, as opposed to just his marketing, and, you know, come in, we'll cure your cancer. Well, you haven't cured anybody of cancer. No, I mean, myself, as I, you, you told your story earlier about when you were younger, you believed in a lot of paranormal stuff, and, you know, as a kid, so did I. It was through the critical thinking and stuff that, you know, has led me, you know, fortunately to here. And I had the same concern. I'm like, oh, what about all those stories about the ghosts? They were great stories. That all that information should still be there, and it is. That's what you're saying, right? But it's yeah. just, it's just clarified in a way. Sure. If you look up ghost hunters, there's probably an article on that, and we'll talk about what they look for and what they claim. So, so this is an interesting side story on that subject. Uh, Kenny Biddle is a uh, paranormal, used to be paranormal ghost hunter, paranormal investigator slash ghost hunter. I don't remember if he had his own TV show, but he, he knows people who have TV shows are the ghost hunters. You know, collectively, between him and two other people I met, they had 30 years of hunting ghosts experience. And they all believed it, right? They were writing pamphlets on how you know when you got a ghost photography and whatever. Well, Kenny has come to our side. He actually presented at SciCon about how all the photos he now knows why he was either mistaken or they're fake the ones he looked at or whatever, and it tells him how they're done. So, like, he writes about this stuff, so now his writings are now, you know, on the ghost hunting pages on Wikipedia, you know, so that stuff is still there, but it says, hey, I know how this is done, and it's not ghosts. Is there a mechanism for your edits or articles to be pinned so they can't be just overwritten by mm -hmm. random people? It, no, but as or I are there editors that will review <laughs> edits before yeah. they get posted? No, no, okay. someone could do that. that could, an, edit, an edit in Wikipedia could be, I changed a comma to a period or semicolon, or it can be what you said. I've rewritten an entire article once fell soup and replaced it. So that could happen. But as I mentioned before, there was the, there's the watch list. So if you're the person who wrote that article, and, and our team, there's multiple people looking at multiple multiple people looking at the same article. So we'll all get triggered. Okay, what happened here? Well, that's no good. And you go in and you push a button and their stuff gets removed and your stuff gets put back. Now, if, if, if they were right to do that, because you made a big mistake, usually that would happen in a big article, but say a paragraph or two, like I mentioned on the Flat, uh, flat Earth uh, Society, the, the new section I added was deleted, right? Other editors, which weren't guerrilla skeptics, got involved and also knew that no, what I put was correct and it should stay. So the other article, the other editor who was trying to make the article fair and balanced for Flat Earthers basically had to go away because it, it works by consensus. And if you fight that, if the guy says, no, I'm going to delete it again, well, eventually he would be blocked. I'm just thinking of a ping pong game where you put something. Yeah, it, it happens. It happens. Have groups organized. To do it, it, it's called an edit war, in fact. Yeah. And, and that's to be avoided at all costs because people will be blocked. So what you do is you go to the talk page. So it, the, the Wikipedia um, standard is be bold. If you think something is wrong, go fix it. Don't talk to anybody first. 
But if it then gets reverted, and the person will say, no, I took this off because so-and-so in the description, go to talk, it's, it's either written that way, which, you know, that's, that's the intention. Then you go to the page that told you talk, and you say, okay, as the other editor did with the Flat Earth Society, this is not fair, why is this back here? This shouldn't be there. And then people argue, the editors argue about it, and the consensus is reached. It's all by consensus. And luckily the consensus of the editors follows the rules of Wikipedia generally, which is uh, you know, science rules. Okay, as a super skeptic, could you tell us what uh, makes um, Susan Gerbis uh, qualified and uh, her background to start the group? She's a baby photographer. <laughs> real, real qualification I'm talking about. She's a baby photographer. She, she got in and pulled into this. That means anybody can do this. She, this is, this is, she, she went and she has, she's got a sharp mind. She could have been a scientist. She actually started some degree early and didn't finish it, if I remember right. But she understands what's nonsense and what's not, not nonsense. She understands science and what's not science. Uh, to the point where she could talk to other people uh, from the skeptical movement and they agreed with her. And, um, and she just gets like by other people. Thanks. This is very important. And, and, and we're not, we don't, we don't do what Susan says. So, I mean, we're all individuals. Like I guess you've heard, you know, heard, herding skeptics is like herding cats. But you know, we all have off mind. But we, we all have the mindset that scientific rationalism is the correct way to view the world, and that is what Wikipedia believes too. So it doesn't really matter what Susan thinks on that subject. Over here. Sorry, Susan. Uh, thanks. It's been very informative. I, I always knew the Constitution could be interpreted in all different ways, but I always kind of trusted Wikipedia, and now I don't. <laughs> so I've got nothing to trust. But well, how, how did you think Wikipedia was Well, created? I think the Constitution was, you know, I mean... No, seriously, how did, you, how did you think, if one person wrote it, then how would you yeah. know they were right? No, yeah. you're absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. correct. But my question is, um, what's the organization, I know about your organization, and how it's organized. What is the organization of Wikipedia? How is that organized? Is okay. It a non-profit corporation? But yes, non-profit corporation. I don't know too much about it. We're not part of Wikipedia, uh, you know, I, I see their banners raising money to keep their servers operating. Okay, they're not they, owned by somebody. No, it's a large, it's, it's, a, it's a, you might know more than I do. You want to talk about it? Um, it was started about 15 years ago by a guy named Jimbo Wales, um, and they have all their um, rules and regulations that keeps it going. But as he says, it's a nonprofit. Um, it's sustained entirely by um, Volunteer contributions. Right. They don't take money from big organizations or anything like that. You can't pay them to write an article. Yeah, because they do have they a staff. Do, they they do have some number of staff. Yeah. I was going to think about 30. You said it's about 100 or something like that. Okay. I spoke to one once, um, but it keeps going. Well, given that, then, um, I'm asking uh, another, I'm really asking towards this question. Um, how are, how are, how you, uh, commercial speech is not as restrictive as other speech. You know, it, they give it a lot more leeway under the First Amendment. And uh, you know, do you have insurance? Does this Susan Gerber provide insurance for you? When you criticize Goop, isn't Goop a company or something? Yeah, they're a company. Yeah. What? Well, I take that case in a minute. You're hurting their business. Are you a lawyer? <laughs> so, so I actually, actually don't think we're hurting their case because there was just an article published yesterday about a hundred forty thousand dollar lawsuit, and Goop, and Goop is being uh, discussing it. This is actually going to help their business. Because bad publicity is sometimes good publicity. People don't care about the facts. No, so the thing is bad publicity. Nobody cares about the facts. I guess. So I realize that you are sort of focused on Wikipedia. You've invested time in learning their rules and all that sort of stuff. But it occurs to me that you know we see the the big monkey bucks with um, Facebook and Twitter being hauled in front of Congress and they're trying to either by, either the Congress may regulate them or more likely they will, of their own accord, try and regulate themselves more, police content. Do you, do you or the larger group of, of skeptics uh, in the skeptic community see, see opportunities to be guerrilla skeptics on Twitter, so girl skeptics on these other platforms that are now look like they're going to come up with mechanisms to challenge things and, and a very sort of similar process to this? So, you know, that's an evolving thing. I haven't thought too much over the subject, but I can tell you one recent thing that happened, and I, you might have noticed it. Um, YouTube, which was one of the ones above a Wikipedia on the list, so obviously a huge 
amount of people look at that site every day. Um, they have started, if there is a pseudo-scientific uh, conspiracy video, they will point people to the Wikipedia article on the subject. Right? And that was, that was announced just about a month ago. And that's really helpful. And the reason that's helpful is I, I've been researching the flat earth thing for a couple of months, because so I'm going to write a skeptical inquiry article about it. And one of the things that, that's become clear is, and this is by the statements of the people who run that movement, if you could say run the movement, but people who've kickstarted it, mostly Mark Sargent, with his Flat Earth Clues is the name of his video series two years ago. Um, he himself in an interview said, the reason that this is growing is because of YouTube and because YouTube's little panel on the right, which says, if you like this video, you should watch this video. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you watch one, you watch a JFK assassination one, and hey, it's a conspiracy. YouTube's algorithm said, hey, let me suggest Flat Earth to you. And you have people going down that rabbit hole and being sucked in and believing that too. So YouTube has been pushed back on. They realize this is a problem. And they made this announcement recently. I personally haven't seen it implemented yet, but they're going to push people to the wiki. So if they push people to the, to the Flat Earth article on Wikipedia, you know, hopefully there's some good information there, rather than just not, a, not another video made by one of the conspiracy people. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, yeah, one second. I was just, I, we try to get everyone to have one question first. Mm -hmm. I know you had one earlier, so we'll get back to you in a second. Um, you're next. Uh, just be patient. And um, but I wonder for for the collective humanists here, like we, we the question was earlier, and I don't know if the, if it was answered correctly, but it was about monitoring or editing religious websites, right? Because um, I think to me. Religion is pseudoscience. Is there, what's the difference between religion and pseudoscience? Age. <laughs> Mostly age, well, except for uh, Scientology. 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 Just, just if I can interject, uh, if, if a statement is made, Jesus is resurrected, Wikipedia will change it to Christians believe Jesus was resurrected. Oh, absolutely correct. Yeah. So that, that's the way all the religious right. stuff gets in there, but it's always qualified with Christians believe X, which is true. Um, but right. but what they believe is not as and that's one of the that's the way that's that's one of the things we might have an edit war on. You will in fact see fundamentalist Christians change that to Jesus was resurrected, and then try to say no, that's a fact. And then because of the Wikipedia consensus policy, no, that's just going to wind up being changed to the actual truth. Christians believe that. Uh, I was just wondering if there is any uh, connection, or if you have any input from Michael Shermer's uh, Skeptic Magazine, and if not, do you know how active? Is he in uh, contributing to the Wikipedia? Um, I think did Caps the last part contributing to what? Uh, to the Wikipedia. To Wikipedia. No, I, he's not part of our group, and we don't really have any. He, he was no inspiration for your group at all. Uh, Michael Shermer? Yeah. They have to ask Susan that. I'm, I'm, she's not brought him up, so I, I, I can't say for sure, but I don't think so. And you don't know anything about his. Uh, uh, I know he writes for Skeptic Magazine, and, and we often will use that as a source to push back on pseudoscience. Yeah, I don't know about you know, I mean, the impact directly of, of Michael Sharma. Anyone else have any questions, comments? Who's Seth Andrews? Who's Seth Andrews? The Thinking Atheist. Podcast? Don't know that? Don't know that. Okay, it's like somebody explains Seth Andrews. Should we start a... Uh a guerrilla editing, Wikipedia editing for religion? No. What's that? I've kind of started it. Oh, really? Well, so that's my point, actually, of being here. So if you yeah. join the team, you can get trained. You can work on the scientific skepticism angle if you want. But you can branch off and do whatever else you want. Any, anyone else? Any questions? Just sort of a practical question, which would probably come up in your training. Uh, so to write a nice Wikipedia article requires an investment of quite a number of hours. Is there a way to get some sort of pre-clearance when you say, hey, I'm thinking of writing an article about X, Y, and Z. Uh, I think it qualifies for notability, whatever. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you establish a talk page before the article is written so that you don't spend you know, eight hours writing something only for it to be you know, deleted and never seen again? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the best way to do that would be, so everyone on my team anyway develops an article in user space. It's a sandbox, maybe computer speak. Uh, it's something that's not part of the actual encyclopedia, so if someone searches it, it doesn't come up with your page. 
it would be your username slash sandbox slash whatever you're writing the article about, right back to this. And then you'd start an article there. You could just put an outline. And maybe my suggestion, and I've done this, you put an outline with the references. Now you have to, to do this, you would have to be writing an article about an object, an organization, a group, something, a person that's notable, all right? So you'd have to figure out if that was true first before you waste any time at all. If you think they're notable, you could put cite the references on that on that page of yours, and then you can make the Wikipedia page, hey, I'm gonna write this page, please go look over here. Does this look notable? That would probably be the best thing to do. Teach um, Steve Covey's win-win uh, concepts of uh, seven habits, blah blah blah. Uh, in two countries, France and Germany, the skepticism was so intense that uh, out of well, very few had it because they said it was another American cult and psycho battle. Can you mention if you? You know, a lot of money gets passed from people who want to become better in the corporation and much of it is cycle bubble. Do you know anything about that? Or do you write about that? I work in a big corporation. I'm not going to make a comment on that subject until I retire. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, what was your statement about Stephen Covey? Do you view it as... as <laughs> yeah, with a skeptical mind, I agree. And, it, and much of it works, but it become these kind of things. Um, yeah. These trainings become cults in yeah. people's minds. I, 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 yeah, I will agree. I'll say in general when I'm talking about my specific company, big corporations. Somebody up in HR reads a book, you know, that somebody got published, and it's a snowball book. Or some other company thought it was a great idea, and they said, "Ooh, GE is doing this. We have to do this too." And then they'll spend, you know, millions of dollars to train all the people, and it's got no scientific basis at all. That, in general, that is the truth. I, I don't know that I see that much about that uh, personally, but as I said, when I retire, there's going to be an article on the subject. Yeah, when, when, when my company invites Deepak Chopra to speak, that's when I'll be updating <laughs> yeah, my resume. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Well. I want to thank you very much for what? what? You just went woo. Just I want to thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. So, as usual, um, 